Fortune oh my team God. science. <laughs> Somebody's gonna think that's really inappropriate. Yeah. So today we're gonna show you how to skin a squirrel, but not just any squirrels. We've got a whole bunch of different ones. We've got albino squirrels. Yeah. Right? And we got flying, flying squirrels. squirrels. We got a black squirrel. We got a whole bunch of different cool YouTubers that are gonna help us uh, tell you about it. Let's get started. The whole reason we're doing this is to create research specimens for the museum that will eventually look like this. This is what we're aiming for, right? A nice, nice steady skin? It just looks so bizarre. But there's a lot of stages involved in getting the sample prepared, so let's start from the beginning. The first stage when you're making a museum specimen is the data stage. You need to know where the animal came from. I don't suppose the gas station sells ice, do they? Yeah. You gotta figure out what species it is. So these are both fox squirrels. Take the measurements and you gotta write all this down on a piece of paper. From there, you gotta cut a hole in the belly, right here. Just enough that you can get the skin and you can start pulling it off. Usually if you pinch it up, you make like a small cut sideways and then cut up the sides. So we're making our initial incision, uh, apparently from like around here to around here. Then we're gonna turn the squirrel. Yeah, it's like the soft part of the belly. And then start turning the squirrel inside out through that hole. Well, let's see. It's slippery in here. Everything's kind of wet and it's kind of gooey, so the cornmeal creates like more of a traction. You did a pretty good job on that flying squirrel there. Yeah, you are. He's moving pretty quick. Now, is this what a taxidermist does too? They make a little tiny hole and then they try to pull it inside out or they make a bigger cut? We don't call what we do taxidermy because we're not so much interested in creating a lifelike replica of a living animal as we are creating a specimen that uh, fits well into a drawer and demonstrates the qualities of the skin that we're really yeah, right. interested in. It's a delicate process where I have to cut occasionally off, right? just to break the, I guess, the muscle from the skin. Most mammals actually have a baculum or a penis bone, and that's what we're trying to get out to have it go along with its skeleton. You want to preserve the skin, so you have to deal with the genitalia, right? In, in some ways, you have this external feature that you have to get around, but once you get inside, I think the male reproductive system is a bit easier to um, really to interpret. And the, 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 Are you cutting around ovaries and, and things like that in a few sure, sure. All around, you go through the leg, you get the other leg out. I'm pretty proud of myself that I'm not nauseous. So pull the tail out so that the tailbone, all the all the vertebrae there are out. Oh, look at that. Oh, no. Oh, that's that? The tail? That's the tailbone. Oh, my goodness. Ah! Yep. <laughs> too much. It's too, yeah, it's too, too much. much. It's gonna be there you go. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. God. And then you pull the skin on up the back, work the two forearms out, and then you have the head is the last bit. You've got a clip at the ears, clip at the eyes, and then finally clip at the nose, and then you have the skin on one side and the carcass on the other. Got it. This is the inside out squirrel. You don't really have a, a, an appreciation for how well your skin is put on your own body until you have to take some things off. The next step is you take the skin that is now inside out, and you need to stuff it with cotton. What we've done is we've uh, taken some rolled cotton and we've sort of, you can tell this is kind of like a squirrel head, tri like triangular shape. So you can tell the shape is this is the stuff and it's gonna go inside the squirrel when we turn that skin back. And turn it back right side in so that you now can see the fur of the animal on the outside, cotton on the inside, you sew up the holes on the belly and the mouth and you put little rods on the legs to keep the legs and the tail straight. Stainless steel wire, we, we threaded that up above the cotton and all the way into the hand so we sort of have like a, it's like, a, it's like a, a little puppet bone there that we can move them around with. This is a step where your animal might look really good or really bad depending on getting that stuffing right. So this is where the experts, the guys that do a lot of it, are really really good and they can do it really good the first time. Very difficult. So we just went and took this specimen over to blow some air on it and add a little additional drying agent. So what we ended up doing is getting the air to kind of go backwards against the green of the hair and it actually dries the skin and actually fluffs the hair up. So now we can go and brush back over it and it makes the skin really nice and bright but the big thing is we don't have a little added moisture or grease. When we have it in a collection the ears are a big thing. If I let this out it's going to dry and harden up and so I want to make sure that I have a pin that's going to just hold the ear down in place. That's pretty cool. I don't, I don't know. I need a profound final thought. Like so. your, your dreams uh, can take flight now. Oh, there we go. We want someone to be able to come back in 50 years, in 100 years, in 500 years, and look at the specimen, take measurements if they need, maybe take some samples if they need to do tests, and basically use this animal like a time machine to see what the world was like in 2014. It's never going to take flight again, but they'll be ready to go.
I love the deep sea. Zombies. If you enjoyed that video about skidding squirrels, we got a whole lot more videos on Untamed Science. Uh, so check out these right here. Obviously, you're gonna subscribe to our channel. And a big thanks to all of these amazing YouTubers. My name is Vanessa. I run a channel called Braincraft, which is about neuroscience and psychology explained with crafty things. And if you want to find out more, you can click the link that is somewhere in this area just here. Awesome. That's great. <laughs> uh, my name is Emily Grassley. I'm the host and writer for The Brain Scoop, which is an educational YouTube channel about natural history and uh, the wonderful things that happen behind the scenes at such places like the Field Museum. So we do everything uh, from specimen preparation to uh, just talking about the joy of the natural world, uh, you can subscribe to it. <laughs> you should. My name is Joe Hansen. I host It's Okay to Be Smart from PBS Digital Studios. You can check it out at YouTube.com. It's Okay to Be Smart, or I don't know, click right here. It's a lot easier. Stay curious. <laughs> That's, That's my good. tagline. Yeah. That's good. I like that. That's good.